Welcome back to J48 Ministries, where today Jonathan Pike will continue in the series Rapture Watch. Today's focus is, are we in the tribulation? If not, when? All righty. Thank you, Will. Uh, I know with a lot of the things that are going on right now in the world, a lot of people are asking, is this not the tribulation period? Um, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of people that believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, mid-tribulation rapture, or post-tribulation rapture. Now, me, myself, I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, and that's what I want to cover for with y'all today. And the primary focus of our um, study today is going to come out of 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Paul clearly shows us that we will not, listen to me, we will not be here during the tribulation period. Now, I do want to uh, make a point, though. Jesus said all the way over there in Matthew chapter 24, he clearly tells us, and I believe it's right there at verse number 8, he said uh, he had just talked about a lot of the things and a lot of the signs that were going on, and he said, after you see these things come to pass, then are the beginning of sorrows. Now, I want to tell you something. You have seen, yeah, it's verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So here's what he's saying right here. Sorrows is a time of weeping, crying, crying out. Look up that word sorrows by definition. Um, it will show you right now what is going on. As a matter of fact, right there, the verse before that, verse 7, talks about there will be pestilences, um, disease that is ravaging. And here's the thing, y'all, about covid COVID isn't just a, a, an American disease, something on American soil. It is a worldwide pandemic right now, all right? Jesus said that right there in verse 7, and then he says, These are the beginning of sorrows. These are the beginning of crying. These are the beginning of, of hard times, all right? Um, but he did say this will happen. So now... When you think about that, all of a sudden you realize the beginning of sorrows. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This ain't nothing. When we really dig into what the tribulation period will uh, be like, now, I will cover that in a much later podcast, but w the tribulation period is going to be unbelievable time of sorrow, crying, weeping, um, people begging to die. Listen to me. People begging to die. Healthy people wishing they could die to get off of this, only to fall into the pits of hell where they really find out they have eternal problems. But, uh, but the Bible tells us right here, and like I said, I want to clarify with you today. I want to show you today that we will be raptured out before the tribulation period begins. Now, I've already given you a timeline of, of when I roughly think the rapture could happen, all right? And I based that on one of the first um, rapture watches where I was showing you that the time of Israel as a nation, and Jesus said, this generation shall not pass. All right, so I believe we are close to that time. I believe COVID and the events of 2020 have really ushered in um, a lot of changes to show you what a one world government system and what um, the technologies of a one world government system that we now possess um, is really exposed a lot of that technology. All right. So now I want to show you that we will not be here, though, during that time. All right. So right here in Second Thessalonians chapter two, Paul tells us something right here. He says, uh, and I'm going to start at verse one. And but now listen, the key verse is probably around verse seven. But but we'll get there in a minute. Listen here. He says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Now, when Paul was writing this, Paul was talking about the persecution that the Romans were putting on uh, the Jewish people, all right? Um, little did they know, and just like I said in one of the earlier podcasts, little did the Jews know that Israel was fixing to just kind of disintegrate as a nation all right they was fixing to go away for a while but they're back they're back full throttle and uh so that's what paul didn't realize but we now see that all right he says verse three he says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first 
and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, what is that falling away? Falling away? Many people believe this is a time when people will quit going to church, um, when people will quit believing in the faith of Jesus Christ, all right, and the grace of Jesus Christ. And, and I want to tell you something there again, something that 2020 has exposed. Um, they had to shut down everything, including the churches. The church here in America was um, being said that we were not a um, uh, not important to a point where y'all need to stay closed, all right? We are now beginning to see, even in America, a Christian per se nation where there is a falling away all across the nation. Even when churches reopen because of COVID and many other things, the numbers are not back up. I mean, it is just, it's unbelievable that the numbers of church attendance have dropped, not in just particular areas and regions, but everywhere. And many believe this could be that falling away. As a matter of fact, Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 over there once again. He said in those days that people will more or less become heart, uh, disheartened. All right. They will, they will, um, a matter of fact, let me just find the verse right here and, and tell y'all. But Jesus was telling them, he tells them, he says uh, right here in verse 12, he says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold the love where where does love come from uh from god the love of god and the love of christians the love of people in general shall wax cold because iniquity is another word for sin sin will just run rampant and you're seeing that right now it is so sad what is happening here in america much less all over the world right now all right so the love of many has waxed cold and he says right here there will be a falling away first and then the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition but listen here goes on verse four he says for who's who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called god now notice this is capital g god or that is worshipped, so that he as God, capital G God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right? So now look what's happening right here. This Antichrist is going to make himself God, or at least he's going to try. But the Bible, Paul clearly tells us right here in verse 4, he is going to try and make himself God. He is going to sit in the third temple that will be built there in Israel, in Jerusalem, on the Temple Mount, as God. He will proclaim to be God. But then look what goes on in verse 5. He says, Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you of these things. Talking about Jesus in Matthew 24. He says, And now you know... What withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now there's your answer right there. There's the key right there. All right, so here's what happens. Look in verse 6. He says, And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. What is it that withholdeth? What is stopping sin right now? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is amongst us right now. Jesus clearly told us this in John chapter 14. He said, I'm going to send the comforter that he will be with you. He said, I'm not going to leave you alone. He said, I got to go into my father's house. I'm going back to heaven. He says, but I will send the comforter. Now, we know that on in the book of Acts where the... um. Holy Spirit descended down from heaven like a rushing wind and has dwelt among us every since then, okay? And you think that is bad, all right? And it is. Don't get me wrong. Sin is bad. Um, the, the ways of the world is bad right now, and you think it's bad. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of good, too. Um, I helped out when um, one of the hurricanes come through. I've helped out when the tornadoes have come through. I've seen on TV when other areas where natural disasters were help happening. And guess what there was? There was a lot of people sacrificing time, vacation time, sacrificing money, um, whatever the case may be, um, the resources, uh, providing the resources to help people. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is still moving amongst us. Um, it is moving and is stronger than ever before. But... 
so is sin. All right. And the Holy Spirit is restraining sin. And he says it right there in verse six. He says, now, you know, what withholdeth. That's the Holy Spirit, y'all, that he might be revealed in his time. The Holy Spirit is withholding the Antichrist from being revealed at this moment. Verse seven. And here's the key. He says, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. There you go again. Iniquity is another word for sin. Sin is already at work. But now here's the key. Listen, only he who now letteth will let. Only the Holy Spirit will let what he will let until. That's the key. Until he be taken out of the way. When will the Holy Spirit be removed? At the rapture. Now, what is the rapture? Well, we're told over here in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 18. And here's what it says. He says, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord." Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So there you have what 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 is going to be that day. There it is. There's going to be a shout. A um, Gabriel will step out. He will blow the trumpet and the dead in Christ shall rise. And those that are remain shall be quickly changed. Notice the key, though, there, the dead in Christ. Only those that have believed in Jesus Christ and as their personal Lord and Savior will rise up out of the grave and will be reunited with their souls in heaven. All right. And then those of us which are alive and quickly are alive and remain will be quickly changed. All right. And so instantly, wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, you will disappear just in a moment in the twinkling of it, you will disappear all right all your clothes everything that you have on you will fall to the ground if you're driving down the road your car will just crash um whatever direction it was going in uh, planes um pilots that were saved will fall out of the sky um ships um, will no longer have captains i mean it will it will be uh like 9 11 all over again it will be crashing and chaos and and, and all over again but it will be a a worldwide event where people just miraculously disappear it kind of reminds you in the um in the um uh help me avenger movies where uh he flipped his fingers and all of a sudden all those people disappear it will be something uh to that kind of thing where people will just all over disappear but here's the key not not giving avengers movie any credit but here's the key it will be the people that have chose jesus christ as their personal lord and savior but then Here's something that's it's interesting, and this is how I know, and this is how I can prove that we are pre-tribulation rapture. The Holy Spirit will be removed. Now, how can the Holy Spirit be removed, and yet we are left here for the tribulation period? It can't. All right, well, how can we be removed and, the tribu- and this Holy Spirit left here? All right, it can't. All right. And Paul clearly, clearly, clearly says that right there. Y'all listen to me. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Until he be taken out of the way. Until the Holy Spirit is removed. Then, the verse 8 tells us, and then shall the wicked be revealed. All right. So then the Antichrist will be revealed. But the Holy Spirit has to be removed before the Antichrist can be revealed. And If the Holy Spirit leaves, then I've got to leave. You've got to leave all that have chosen Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you know that because uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says this. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So if the Holy Spirit leaves, you got to leave. You, the whole God is not going to. Jesus said it over in John 14. He says, I will not leave you 
comfortless. But yet the Antichrist will not be revealed until the Holy Spirit is removed. So there again, how can you have a pre-tribulation, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a mid-tribulation or post-tribulation rapture but yet the Holy Spirit is withholding the Antichrist. Well, the Antichrist is he's the key factor of the tribulation period, all right? So how can he be revealed and doing his thing, but yet he hasn't even been revealed yet? You see what I mean? But the only way he can be revealed is if the Holy Spirit is removed. So there is your key right there. We will not. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will not be here. During the tribulation period. Now, just like back in Matthew chapter 24, verse 8, these are the beginning of sorrows. You are seeing this stage being set potentially for the tribulation period, but that does not mean you're going to suffer the tribulation period. As a matter of fact, let me give you a little more peace and a little more help right here. God says in Revelation 16, verse 1, He says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. All right, so the wrath of God will be poured out upon the earth during the tribulation period. But the Bible very clearly tells us this. It says in Romans 1.18, he says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. It's not set for me and you. It's set for the ungodly. John 3.36 says this, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Those that don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, once again, the wrath of God abides on you. The wrath of God is upon you. Um, and then finally, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says this, For God hath not, y'all listen to me right here, take comfort in these words, God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He has not only saved us, He has not only saved us from the wrath of God, and many people right now say, Oh my goodness, I can't believe our God has a wrath. Listen, sin must be dealt with. Satan must be dealt with. And the wrath of God will deal with sin and Satan. And Jesus has paid the way for you. Jesus loves you. As a matter of fact, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's the key, y'all. It don't matter who you are, what your nationality is. It don't matter uh, where you came from. It don't matter what you're doing right now in your current situation. Jesus already knows, but he loves you so much. He wants to save you from that sin. He wants to save you from the wrath of God. The wrath of God will be poured out on the sin, and that sin is the sin in your life. But Jesus has paid for your sin. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, he says, for your sin your iniquities I will remember no more Psalms tells us and I think it's 103 he says um, I will remove your sins as far as the east is from the west God has sent his son Jesus to pay for your sins but you must accept Jesus you must ask Jesus to forgive you of those sins as a matter of fact Romans 10 tells us he says for those that confess with their mouth and believe in their heart shall be saved. You must confess that I am a sinner and that Jesus loves me and that he will forgive me of your of my sins. And you got to believe that. That's what it says by believing in your heart. And you will have the wrath of God removed from your life. But listen, if you are a born-again child of God, the tribulation period is not meant for us. It's meant for two people. It's meant to um, for the Satan and the demonic powers of this world to have their moment. And that God is going to deal with them, all right, at the Battle of Armageddon, and He is going to eternally cast them into the lake of fire. But here's the other thing it is the tribulation period is for a time when Israel will finally turn to their Messiah, Jesus. They will be misled by the anti Christ, anti Jesus, and they will turn their lives around. And give it to Jesus, Messiah. They will call on Jesus. And then it's at that point, at the end of the tribulation, where he will set up his thousand-year millennial reign. Now, I'm out of time, but I, I do want to cover a couple more things right here. I want to tell you all this. 
We are not meant for the tribulation period. As a born-again child of God, we will not, listen, we will not suffer the tribulation period. All right, all the things going on in this world right now, all the current events of this world right now, do not let them upset you. Do not let them uh, get you all bent out of shape. Because listen to me, our God is a mighty God that loves us. As a matter of fact, he tells us over there in 1 Corinthians 6 again in, in verse 20, he says, don't you know you are bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Our God loves us. He paid a precious, precious price for us because we are precious in his sight. So do not let the ways and the things of this world upset you and bother you. We will not, as a born-again child of God, we will not be here during the tribulation period. But it is our job and our duty to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ so they won't be here either. Thank you, everyone, for listening today. If you would like to know how to become a born-again child of God, or maybe you just need prayer, maybe you have something in your life and you just need prayer right now, please be sure to comment in the comments below, and we will be sure to get back to you. Thank you again for listening. Well, everyone, that is the end of our podcast for today. If you enjoyed our podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe and the little bell to be notified when the new podcasts are released. If you'd like to give to our ministry, please go to worship at woodland.com forward slash give. And in the comments, put podcast. If you'd like to mail us a check, you can mail it to 114 Bayview Drive, Phoenix City, Alabama, 36869. 